Part Two of Gods of the North by Robert E. Howard. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. In a cold, dark universe whose sun was extinguished eons ago, Amra felt the movement of life, alien and unguessed. An earthquake had him in its grip and was shaking him to and fro at the same time chafing his hands and feet until he yelled in pain and fury and groped for his sword. "'He's coming to, Harsa,' grunted a voice. "'Haste, we must rub the frost out of his limbs, if he's ever to wield sword again.' "'He won't open his left hand,' growled another, his voice indicating muscular strain. "'He's clutching something.' Amra opened his eyes and stared into the bearded faces that bent over him. He was surrounded by tall, golden-haired warriors in mail and furs. Amra, you live! By Grom, Niard, gasped he, am I alive, or are we all dead and in Valhalla? We live, grunted Aesir, busy over Amra's half-frozen feet. We had to fight our way through an ambush, else we had come up with you before the battle was joined. The corpses were scarce cold when we came upon the field. We did not find you among the dead, so we followed your spore. In Emer's name, Amra, why did you wander off into the wastes of the north? We have followed your tracks in the snow for hours. Had a blizzard come up and hidden them, we had never found you by Emer. Swear not so often by Emer, muttered a warrior, glancing at the distant mountains. This is his land, and the god bides among yonder mountains, the legends say. I followed a woman, Amra answered hazily. We met Bragi's men in the plains. I know not how long we fought. I alone lived. I was dizzy and faint. The land lay like a dream before me. Only now do all things seem natural and familiar. The woman came and taunted me. She was beautiful as a frozen flame from hell. When I looked at her I was as one mad and forgot all else in the world. I followed her. Did you not find her tracks, or the giants in ice mail I slew?" Niard shook his head. We found only your tracks in the snow, Amra. Then it may be I was mad, said Amra dazedly. Yet you yourself are no more real to me than was the golden-haired witch who fled naked across the snows before me. Yet from my very hands she vanished in icy flame. He's delirious, whispered a warrior. Not so, cried an older man, whose eyes were wild and weird. It was Atali, the daughter of Emir, the frost giant. To the fields of the dead she comes and shows herself to the dying. Myself, when a boy, I saw her. When I lay half-slain on the bloody field of Woolraven, I saw her walk among the dead in the snows, her naked body gleaming like ivory and her golden hair like a blinding flame in the moonlight. I lay and howled like a dying dog because I could not crawl after her. She lures men from stricken fields into the wastelands, to be slain by her brothers the ice giants, who lay men's red hearts smoking on Emir's board. Amra has seen Atali, the frost giant's daughter. Bah! grunted Horsa. Oh, Gorm's mind was turned in his youth by a sword cut on the head. Amra was delirious with the fury of battle. Look how his helmet is dented. Any of those blows might have addled his brain. It was an hallucination he followed into the wastes. He is from the south. What does he know of Atali? You speak truth, perhaps, muttered Amra. It was all strange and weird by Krom. He broke off, glaring at the object that still dangled from his clenched left fist. The others gaped silently at the veil he held up, a wisp of gossamer that was never spun by human distaff. End of 
Gods of the North by Robert E. Howard. The story recorded by Phil. Part Two of Gods of the North by Robert E. Howard. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. In a cold, dark universe whose sun was extinguished eons ago, Amra felt the movement of life, alien and unguessed. An earthquake had him in its grip and was shaking him to and fro, at the same time chafing his hands and feet until he yelled in pain and 